All right, let me go back to the T2Q virtual phone line and get this gentleman on. From the 850 area code, the Emerald Coastline of Pensacola, Florida, making his way to the ring, the man in black, the Buckster. What's going on, Buck? How's it going, gentlemen? Glad, glad, glad to be on tonight. Not much. What's up, man? All right. So, What's up, Greg? Uh, I'll ask you what I've asked uh, the, the other fellows. Um, how do you get the discussion going on fixing some of the problems we have with inequality in this country when it comes to changing some of the laws that may unfairly treat one group as opposed to another? Um, how do you start to get that converse, have that conversation and actually get people to pay attention? First of all, you got to look in the mirror. Um, that's the main thing right there because that's a lot of times you got to look at the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror, because sometimes the people that's in the mirror are the ones that's causing the problem. Um, you got to look at how, how you live your own life first. You know, you got to be happy in your own skin. When you're happy in your own skin, then you, you, other people around you can be happy, if that makes sense give you an example i had a customer a couple of years ago um he was not a person that liked black people um he had the rebel flag hanging out outside the house which i have no problem with but the real estate agent that i was working with stated that you know told me you know warn me about this guy so i gave him a call to set up a time and i don't sound black afro-american whatever you want to call it on the phone so we were talking and everything, and I said, you know, I was just coming over there to paint his house, the inside of his house, to get it ready to sell. At the end of the conversation, his words were, he said, you said sometimes you might bring somebody with you in the event you might need them to help paint. I said, yes, sir, I would. He said, well, please. He said, can you do me a favor? And I said, sure, what do you want, sir? He said, please don't bring any ends to my house. I said, sure, no problem. I said, can I, he said, can you meet me tomorrow at 10 o'clock? I said, sure can, sir. So I hung up the phone. I didn't say anything to him, you know, bring him on the carpet or anything like that. So I go to the house the next day, pull up in his driveway, and um, go knock on the door, ring the doorbell. He comes to the door. I said, hello, my name is Sean, and I'm here to do the painting in your house. And I said, oh, by the way, I said, I don't like ends in my house either. May I come in? This guy was only five foot eight. Now I'm six foot two, 240 pounds. I'm not a small guy, but I'm not the biggest guy. But to a five eight guy that only weighed about 160 wet with two 10 pound ankle weights on, the, on his ankles, my man was scared because he thought I was going to kill him. <laughs> so he let me in and he was sweating. And he was like, oh my God, I messed up. And, you know, I could hear him talking under his breath. I did kind of walk a little heavy behind him just to kind of intimidate him a little bit. And he said, hey, you can have a seat in my chair. He gave me his big chair to sit in. And I said, before we begin, sir, he said, I owe you an apology. He said, I was unaware. I said, hey, keep your apology. I said, you are the person you are. And I said, I don't want a uh, apology that's not genuine. So keep it to yourself. I said, first of all, I said, the reason I'm here, because I'm the best at what I do. That's the reason I was selected. I said, I'm not white, I'm not Mexican, I'm not Chinese, Spaniard, Native American, whatever. I said, I happen to be Afro-American and I'm the best at what I do. And I said, if you want top dollar for your house, when it sells, that's why I'm here. And I said, well, I said, my next question to you, I said, I need to take a look around your house and see, if I, you know, see what the job is going to entail and whether I need to bring any in to the house to help me paint. And he said, I really want to apologize for the mark. I said, I, again, keep it to yourself. It's not needed. And I said, do I have the job or what? And he said, yes, sir, you have the job because she selected you. I said, okay, no problem. So the job took three days. Over the next three days, we talked about everything. And I do mean everything from politics to sports, you know, yada, yada, yada. But at the end of that three days, my man said, you know what? You're the most intelligent individual I've ever met in my life. 
He said, I've never, he said, I always had this picture of what you guys were like. And I said, let me, I said, let me interject something for you. I said, if you ever watch the evening news, I said, it doesn't matter what color you are. I said, they pick the worst people in the world to interview. The illiterate, snaggletooth, raggedy clothes, <laughs> everything. I said, because they, they stereotype. You know, they never t- pick somebody that can speak properly. They always pick somebody that can't speak, you know, and just screaming and yelling in the camera and all that kind of stuff, drawing attention, instead of somebody that said, I don't know what happened. You know, somebody that can actually enunciate words and things of that nature. But after those three days, he changed. Not only did he change, he became a, he he said, you know, he became a regular customer. Not only did he become a regular customer, all his redneck buddies became customers of mine as well. He learned something that everybody is not like they are that you see on television. So that's why I say you got to look in the mirror yourself. It's not just there's the media portrays a picture of certain individuals. You have to look in the mirror and it starts with us. It starts with you. And that's what it's all about. When you when you're happy with yourself and you don't judge other people for the color of their skin or how much money they make or where they work or what where they play or what they do, it doesn't matter. It starts with us. When it starts with you. Then this conversation about racism and everything else will start to fall in place because we, if we listen to each other's differences and then you figure out, hey, you know, we're not so different. We like some of the same things. We like fine cars. We like nice houses. We like nice clothes. You know, we don't have cars sitting in the yard that don't, that, that don't run. We have, you know, we like that, our grass to be manicured and cut and we eat it and things of that nature. We like our houses to be kept up. We don't want to fall behind. We like, we, we like generators on the house. All, I mean, all kinds of things. We have the same likes and dislikes. And that's what you find out. You find out that you're depriving yourself of a human experience when you don't educate yourself and you, don't, and you, you judge people on the front end. So, you know, it's pretty cool to have them as customers. The rebel flags have come down. And we can sit down, we can talk and have a good time. Some of them lead the river flags up. I have no problem with it. But the bottom line of it is he learned something. And anybody can learn at any age. But it starts with us. That's where it starts with. If we want to get, we want to put an end to the racism, we have to look in the mirror and put our differences aside and accept what, you know, accept what is and move forward. Man, okay. Man, that was a great story, and you're a lot better than me because I, I wouldn't have gone over to that racist house <laughs> so you can call the cops on me, and you live in Florida too? 